Good afternoon and welcome to today's planning committee. This is not a public meeting, but a meeting the public can attend. I'm Councillor Susan Durant, Chair of the Planning Committee. Before we commence, I'd like to outline the domestic arrangements for the meeting. We're not expecting a fire practice today. If the alarm sounds, please leave the building by way of the fire exit through the doors at the rear of the chamber on my right. When you've left the chamber, proceed down the stairway and exit through the emergency exit on the ground floor. If there is anybody with mobility issues, please wait in the refuge area at the top of the stairs, where the emergency evacuation lift is located, and use the intercom situated to the left-hand side of the lift doors to call for assistance. The designated assembly point is in the public square in front of Cass beyond the fountain. I'd like to inform members of the public and press that today's meeting will be audio-visually recorded. By entering the council chamber, you accept that you will be recorded and your images retained and broadcast by the council on its website and on YouTube. If anyone intends to record or film any part of today's meeting, please ensure that this does not disturb the conduct of the meeting and you only focus on recording those people participating. Please ensure that your mobile phones are switched to silent mode. May I remind anyone speaking in the meeting that you will need to press the large red button underneath the microphone and ensure the red light is illuminated. This will ensure that you are being recorded. The meeting is proceeding today on the basis that all members of the committee have read their agenda paperwork thoroughly and are aware of what they will be considering today. If any member of the committee leaves the chamber during consideration of an application, they should ensure that they do not take part in the vote on their return, as they will not have heard all the relevant information on that particular item. Thank you. Item one, apologies for absence. We've received apologies from Councillor Steve Cox, Councillor Sophie Lowe, and Councillor Charlie Hogarth. Thank you. Item two, exclusion of the public and press. There are no exempt items on today's agenda. Item three is declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest, please? Fantastic, thank you. Item four is the minutes of the last meeting that was held on the 28th of June, 2022. Can these records be moved as true and accurate? Thank you, is that seconded? And is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Okay, we come to item five now, which is the schedule of applications. Uh, just so you're aware, the item uh, one, the planning application two one oblique zero two three nine nine oblique FUL, has been deferred to a future meeting pending receipt of an updated tree and landscaping information. Um, and so we're going to move on to the next planning application. So we're going to start with application number two, planning application 22 oblique 000343 oblique 3 FUL, which is a change of use from class C3 dwelling house to class C2 small children's home, including two storey side extension, internal alterations, and extension to drop curb at 25 Camborne Close, Adwick Lee Street. Um, this is over to you just now to present. Thank you. Thank you. As mentioned, this application is a change of use from an existing dwelling house to a small children's home, including a two-storey side extension and some alterations to the frontage. So just a quick overview of what the children's home proposal is. Their proposed operation is in relation to two resident children living at the property on a permanent basis, and they'll typically be aged between 9 to 17 years old. Both the children will require one-to-one -one personal care at all times, meaning at least two members of staff will be at the property uh, during all periods. Staff will typically work a shift pattern of between eight and nine hours, which accumulates to three different shift patterns per day, typically two shifts during the day and one shift overnight. The sleeping carers, one will uh, typically sleep overnight while the other um, works through the night. That means overall in a 24 hour period, there'd be six carers based at the property, given the one-to-one -one personal care of the two resident children. During the day, there may be on occasions other, other visits from other um, sort of carers and um, managers of the of the children's home typically they sort of visit only between the hours of nine to five and swap between the different care homes uh, run by the same operator so that would be on a more ad hoc basis during sort of week to week's period 
um, other carers such as therapists and things like that may also visit as well as family members but again on an ad hoc basis. Um, overall the property given the, the size of it and the number of children permanently based there operates very similar to a, a sort of a family dwelling given that there's two resident children and, and two um, carers based there most of the time. In terms of the property itself, it's an existing dwelling house at the moment, a semi-detached property on a residential street. Uh, Campbell Close has, is, is made up of semi-detached properties all the way along and they all look very similar. As part of this proposal, uh, a two-storey side extension is to be erected at the side of the property. As you can see here, the plans that are provided sort of a kitchen and utility ground floor area, um, an extended living space for the resident children, as well as an additional bedroom at the first floor level to create two bedrooms for the, for the resident children and a sleeping room for the staff. Um, as part of this extension, it's, there are similar ones within the street already and it was not going to impact any sort of residential amenity in terms of overlooking or overshadowing. As mentioned as well, there's just a few alterations at the front just to make sure this, the property will provide two off-street parking spaces which will primarily be used by the carers themselves um, and like I said, a small extension to the existing drop curb just to make sure that that driveway is easily accessible. So this just shows here what the property will look like at the, at the end of those, those um, alterations to it. As you can see, it's, it's still got a really big back garden for the resident children and things like that. Of how the property will look apart from the extension, it will just remain as it is existing, like I said, and typically will operate very similar to a family dwelling, but we'll have two resident children there. Um, children's services are here today to go into a bit more detail about the operation if you have any questions. And that's just a photo of, of, the, res of the existing property as it is. Thank you. Oh, I'll just, sorry, just mention, so in overall we had um, 19 representations received for this application, that's why it's been presented today, of which 17 were objectors, and as mentioned, we've got no speakers apart from the applicants themselves. Thank you for that, Jess. We have Mr Lee Vaults and Andy Hood representing Doncaster Children's Services Trust. The applicant have requested to speak in support of the application. This is now your opportunity to address the committee for up to five minutes between you. And please press the large red button when you want to speak and press again to mute the microphone when you've concluded your submission. I'll let you get sit down first. Okay, when you're ready to commence. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. I don't want to take up to five minutes, but I just did want to outline uh, a little bit of the, the vision for Doncaster Children, just to put a bit of context behind these homes. We've got a clear vision in Doncaster uh, and is that all children have the right to a family life uh, and ideally to live in a home with their parents and carers but in some situations that's not always possible and when that isn't possible we want to provide them with homes that are as close to a family life as possible. We see these two bedroom homes as being the closest uh, provision that we can provide that is akin to a family home. These aren't big children's homes, these aren't going to have four or five children, they'll have a small number of staff that rotate and the same two children that will replicate family life. We've chosen uh, this particular uh, home because we want children to live in nice communities with nice schools and to build relationships with residents and build friends as we would do for any children that live in Doncaster. I do want to stress that these homes are only for Doncaster children and for many of those children they currently live outside of Doncaster because we don't have anywhere to keep them at the moment. Uh, so that's very much our ambition for this. I'll pass over to Andy. Thank you, Lee. Uh, my name is Andy Hood. I'm Assistant Director for Practice Improvement in the Trust, but I'm also the Lead Officer for Youth Offending and Youth Crime Prevention Issues in the Borough and have been for the last seven years. So some of the residents' concerns were about a potential increase in youth crime in areas where children's homes exist. Having undertaken an analysis over seven years, there is no increased propensity of youth crime or antisocial behaviour directly linked to a children's home which has been run either by the local authority or by the Doncaster Children's Services Trust um, during the course of the last seven years. Um, we are committed to ensuring that children in Doncaster who have the right to a family life, same as any other child, get to, ra get to be raised in this borough uh, and at the moment, uh, there is significant pressure, as Lee's pointed out, in relation to children placed outside of the borough because of a paucity of quality provision within it. This will go a long way to supporting 
children coming back into our communities and um, all the properties we're here to discuss today have the benefits of being aligned very closely to excellent schools, which is absolutely the minimum we should expect for our children looked after within the borough. Thank you for that. I'm now going to ask committee members if they've got any questions that they'd like to ask Mr Hood or Mr Galt. Councillor Beach. Thank you, Chair. Um, these young people now, are they, they are housed by us but out of the borough at the moment, are they? And, you know, are there family connections within Doncaster? Thank you, Councillor. It's a good question. Yes, all the children that are currently looked after by the borough uh, became looked after whilst they're residents of Doncaster. Uh, subsequently, those children have had to be placed out, not, not all children, but a significant number of children have had to be placed outside of the borough at extremely high costs uh, because there isn't enough, what we would refer to as in-house, but provision run by the council or the trust of sufficient quality within the borough. Thank you for that. Do we have any other questions? Councillor Pickering. Uh, yeah, just to follow up on what Councillor Beach uh, said there, um, it probably got a little bit lost in translation, but uh, uh, you didn't make it clear that the families were still within Doncaster area. Is that is that correct? Difficult to say at this point. The vast majority we would expect to be. If these homes, if we get agreement for these homes, then what we do is a rigorous matching process around which children can be accommodated with other children because we need to make it as 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 so they are as compatible as possible for that. Bearing in mind that the vast majority of children that are placed out of area, their families do still do reside in Doncaster, means that that's highly likely. However, we would need to take into consideration any issues that they may have had in that family home beforehand, and there and what if there is any kind of status around visits for family members, etc. One of our big ambitions around this, though, is to make sure that they are as close as possible to family and friends. Thank you for that. Do we have any other questions? Okay, thank you for that. Do you have any questions for the officer? No? Okay. Is there a proposal to grant planning permission subject to conditions? That's been moved by Councillor Farmer and seconded by Councillor Stapleton. Can we have a show of hands in favour then, please? That's unanimous, so that's been granted. Okay, item number three, plan application 22 oblique 00413 oblique FUL, the erection of dwelling in association with proposed children's home use class C2 on plot 250, keep moat skylights, range development, one dove lane, woodlands, and again, that's over to you, Jess. Hello, yeah. So, very similar proposal, however, this application is in relation to uh, the new build estate uh, at the edge of Woodlands, which is currently being built by Keepmo, uh, known as the Skylarks Development. Uh, this is plot 250, which is also known as One Dove Lane, uh, and like I said, it, it's, it's quite a newly built property, so we've slightly amended the description for this to erection of dwelling in association with proposed children's home as obviously it's not actually formally been used as a residential property under c3 previously again just to highlight i won't run through it all again but the operation is essentially the same two resident children one-to-one -one care um two members of staff of the property shift patterns during the day three shifts same same situation whereby one member of staff will work during the night and one will sleep six carers across the day um, which will cross over at shift, uh, shift the end of shift periods and again ad hoc visits from, manager, uh, from managers and other carers. Just to touch at this, uh, so this property will remain exactly as it is and how it's been built by Keepmo. The house design is known as the Windsor which is a three bedroom detached property. This plot here is it's on a corner position so as you can see you've got two private parking spaces already to the rear and a gardens to the side. Uh, like the property is sort of on the edge of the estate so there's no properties opposite it sort of then goes into the woodland area this is just what the property looks like sort of from its brochure the, like I said no alterations proposed and this is just a bit of an indicative plan showing sort of two bedrooms for the children and I, I would assume the staff bedroom with the ensuite following the similar layout to the application you've just seen like I said, most of the development is actually already built out this keep moat development they are just on the final phases because a few mentioned a few concerns from residents were regarding construction traffic 
here's some photos of the property like i said that's being built as you can see some of the other surrounding properties are um are, are mainly occupied now uh, with the development nearing completion as i've just mentioned this application received 50, 16 objections from members of the public and that is why it's being presented today and we've also got some neighbours here to speak in opposition. Thank you. Thank you for that Jess. We've got a Mr Stephen Halliday who has requested to speak in opposition to the application. Is Mr Halliday here? This is now your opportunity to address the committee for up to five minutes. Please press the large red button when you want to speak and press again to mute the microphone when you've concluded your submission. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thanks for letting us have an opportunity to speak. Um, we're one of the people that's objected to the proposal of the children's homes. Um, for various reasons, it's, uh, it's got a very poor parking area where it's built, uh, it's right on the corner, it's on the narrowest road in the, in the estate, uh, and if they say that they've got two car parking spaces, and but you're going to have six members of staff, so at any one time there's going to be four cars outside each vehicle, and there's already a major problem for people parking already on this date, and for the next 18 months to 24 months they're still constructing, so there's construction traffic. Uh, entering and leaving the estate between the hours of uh, half seven and half three. Thank you for that. Do any committee members have any questions for Mr Halliday? Thank you very much for your time. Uh, we've now, we'll ask committee members, oh, we've done that bit, sorry. Just all, just all done that, finish yet. I thought we had to sort of comment on that. Oh, no, sorry. You, you speak for your five minutes. Right. Right. And then the committee will come in at the end when you finish and they will ask you questions on the context. Yep. Okay. So, do you want, how, how much longer is there, Tim? Four minutes. You've got four minutes left. Right, and also, the, why is this such an issue to have uh, three children's own proposed for Woodlands when Woodlands has already got a high crime? An antisocial behaviour record throughout the estates, and we've been to the, the two previous planning permissions, and on various occasions, the trust, uh, children's trust things, have lied to us because they've told us there's never been any issues at any of the children's homes, right? And there was issues that they wanted to score for where the police were called, but at the, at the meeting point, it were never expressed that reasons why. Uh, it's everything that they tried to say to us was everything was rosy now i understand that children need to have a children's uh, upbringing in the local environment but uh doncaster council in past experiences has got a very poor child protection rate this uh, systems have been in uh, special measures on various occasions and that's why some of these children i think have been farmed out to local uh, authorities in different counties right for that reason and also the original planning application on the estate was granted for c3 dwelling not a c2 so does that give everybody else their opportunity because it's a new build property to buy a purchase house further along and turn it into a different dwelling thank you for that mr Halliday. do we have any questions no, but thank you for your time. We now have Mr Lee Galtz and Andy Hood representing the DCS Trust. The applicant requested to speak and support the application. This is now your opportunity to address the committee for up to five minutes between you. Please press the large red button when you want to speak and press again to mute the microphone uh, when you've concluded your submission. Would you like to start? Thank you, Chair. And just in response to Mr Halliday and the other residents' concerns, I just wanted to start off by uh, just giving a little bit of background that myself, Andy, Jim and other colleagues have met with residents on two occasions to go through our plans. Uh, for the homes, what our proposals were, the rationale behind it, but also to listen to some objections uh, and some concerns, which I absolutely get. 
based on that, we, are, we acknowledge the fact that there are potentially some challenges around parking. Each of the homes has two car parking spaces. There is also potentially the option around, if we felt that needed to, to, to reduce some of the garden and turn it into a car parking space. We are reluctant to do that because we want to maximise the open space for children in those homes. But we acknowledge the fact that we do need to try and find a solution for the parking issues. We appreciate that the, uh, it's quite a small entry point and also there's public transport. So we are in discussion with Keepmote uh, and we are confident that we'll be able to secure some more off-street parking for those homes that will certainly put on another two cars that would reduce the uh, possibility of cars being parked obstructing public transport or on the curbs. There is also a second option around a closed car park uh, where is around about five minutes walk from the homes and there'd certainly be a clear mandate to the managers of that, that homes that if the, the staff if those spaces in front of the homes were full staff are to park in the car park and that is something that would be mandating we absolutely acknowledge the challenges uh, around parking there it would be unsafe for staff to park their cars there and we are we're making sure that we have every opportunity and space for them not to do so in terms of the second one around uh, the issues around antisocial behavior and the quality of children's services i'll pass over to andy thank you lee so it is possible from time to time that police are called to children's homes for a range of different issues that happens across the country uh, what residents were specifically asking about during the consultation sessions was uh, whether there was an increased crime rate around those children's homes and there is not categorically not so some analysis relating to children who are looked after in the criminal justice system uh, last year 34 new children entered the criminal justice system in Doncaster uh, of those only six were looked after children of those six looked after children three were looked after by virtue of some legislation known as Last Boa, uh, which relates to children who become looked after after they've been remanded. So what that means in reality is that only three children entered the criminal justice system were already looked after. One of those, although a Doncaster child, did not live in Doncaster. So there is no direct correlation between children's homes run by the local authority or the Children's Services Trust, young people who reside in those homes, and an increase in offending or antisocial behaviour. That's statistically an inaccurate statement. Um, as to the statement around the trust record on child protection, in the last two Ofsted inspections, uh, in the most recent one, uh, the trust child protection services were uh, classified as requires improvement to be good, which is the second of a, of a four tier rating. And in the inspection before that, they were uh, identified as being good. Uh, specifically issues pertaining to uh, the services being requires improvement to be good at this time relate to some significant issues with the case management system. But it is not a fact that children in Doncaster are unsafe. And I would reference people to the Ofsted report, which specifically uh, does not say that any child in Doncaster is unsafe. That is the most recent evaluation of services undertaken in February of this year. Thank you. And also just one final point on that. Each of these children's homes that we currently have, and the, uh, this one if subject to planning agreement, they are have their uh, external regulations. They are Ofsted inspected. And Doncaster has a good track record through Ofsted inspections of managing good or outstanding children's homes. The Children's Trust and Doncaster Children's Service, uh, Local Authority Children's Service have a good record of managing and providing good care homes for children. Thank you for that. Do we have any questions? Uh, Councillor Stapleton, then Councillor Hickory. Thank you. I'd like just a couple of questions. Um, obviously, I, mentioned, I came across here the, the phrase personal care. Um, and I've got two questions, so this is the first one. Um, does it mean the, the homes will come under CQC regulations because it's offering personal care? No, Councillor. They'll, they'll be under the Ofsted regulations. Uh, there, there may be cases where there are children there who have additional needs, but predominantly uh, our children's homes are, well, we normally place children in CQC registered homes where the personal care issues are so prevalent that they require a specialist response. Yeah, thank you. I, I thought that was the case. I'll just clarify it. 
Um, the other thing is regarding parking. I'm a big believer. You know, the, these are not council vehicles, and you know, I'm a big believer in people can park their cars anywhere they want as long as it's legal. Um, whether you live on the street or actually relevant. Um, and whilst I do take it into consideration what residents are saying, um, there's no control from council on where a member of staff parks their car. It's their choice. Um, but <clears throat> I, w I, w I wanted to ask the question, is it feasible to look at, since we've got two uh, potential homes, if planning is granted for both, quite close to each other, uh, to consider staggering starting work time so it's not all happening at the same time on that street? Um, I mean, I, I, I disagree with what, what was said earlier, I and mean, I've read the report. There isn't going to be six. You know, it, it says quite clearly maximum of four, and it's for handover period, which, knowing people in the care industry, they'll want to do that as quick as possible. So, 15, 20 minutes, and they're off. Um, but I, I do understand, obviously, that there is going to be a handover period, and there's going to be a swapping of vehicles. And I just wonder whether it may be, in this case, because of the proximity, that it could be staggered. <coughs> It, it hasn't been considered, councillor, I'll be honest. Um, because the homes will run distinctly uh, with two residents in each one, it, it would you wouldn't be able to create a synergy between the two homes necessarily in terms of staffing. So we'd have to look about whether or not somebody who was doing the waking night shift, for example, could stay on longer in one of the homes than the others. Uh, I, to be honest, the scheduling of that is, is relatively complicated. I don't want to uh, diminish how difficult that would be to do. I'm happy to take that way and look at it, but I can't give you assurances because we haven't looked at it that at, at this moment. If I may just come in on that. The busiest handover is likely to be around about two o'clock in the afternoon. when And we think certainly in the vast majority of months, parking in a car park that has public access no more than five minutes walk away is a really good alternative for those staff there. And like you say, having been an ex-care worker myself, if I've done a seven, eight hour shift, I'm trying to get away as quick as I can, really. So the handover, whilst there is that hour uh, time slot to do it, it's highly unlikely that it would take the full hour. Thank you for that. Yeah, I'll let you go there because we've got Councillor Pickering patiently away. And just, just as a follow-up to that, obviously, as I said, p for me, personal staff vehicles, it's got nothing to do with the council, where they park their cars, um, albeit there is provision on there. One of the, the, the concern is, if we got... Um, council workers going in with vans for repair work or trades people going in because work needs doing what's the sort of thinking there about how they will be parked would it be the staff has to go away whilst they think that's generally what we do now you know, so where we have uh, property repairs going on in any of our children's homes that we currently run uh, we make sure that there's a minimum disruption for that activity in every case because we recognize residents concerns around parking where we can so we would absolutely do that yes Thank you for that. Councillor Pickering. Yep, yeah, just, just to uh, follow up on uh, what you said about the parking, I'm going to slightly disagree with, with my colleague here. Uh, the, I, I, you know, I believe it is important that you know, the parking issue is sorted out, but you're clearly addressing that, which, which you know, you've got to, got to uh, sort of applaud you for that. You know, most... Uh, um, most people just prefer to hope it'll go away or bury their head in the sand. So you, you're aware of the problem, and obviously you you know you're making uh, provision. Hopefully with the developer. I'm just I'm just sort of curious to know why it couldn't have been included in the application. It would have been really nice and easy for us as a committee to say, well, yes, you've got the alternative provision. Is there any particular reason why it's just sort of read its head now? Uh, no, no, I mean, it's, an, it's a fair point. I think there's just a sequencing of timing. So when we first started exploring this and looking at the planning, we'd not necessarily fully understood, quite understandably, their concerns around parking. So as we've gone through that consultation period, that's become more and more evident. So we're obviously then we need to kind of consider that and do something about it. It just meant that the timing to do both at the same time didn't naturally align. But I think it's a fair point, and if we are looking at any homes in the future, that's something that we'll take on board. Thank you for that. Do we have any other questions? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, okay, committee members, we're going into debate. Do you have any questions for the officer? Wow. Okay. Therefore, is there a proposal to grant planning permission subject to conditions? 
uh, moved by Councillor Stapleton. Is that seconded? Councillor Palmer, can we have a show of hands in favour, please? That's unanimous, thank you. Application number four. Planning application 22 oblique 00414 oblique FUL. Erection of dwelling in association with proposed children's home use, use class C2 on plot 248, keep moats, high arts, grange development, five dove lane, woodlands, Doncaster. Over to you again, Jess. Thank you. Again, very similar proposal. This one is at plot 243, which is just slightly further down Dove Lane at number five. Um, the house type is again just slightly different, instead called the Warwick, but is again a three bedroom detached property. Just to show you again, this, the proposed operation, obviously very similar to what you've already seen. Two resident children, two one-to-one -one personal care, three shifts per day, ad hoc other visitors. Again, just showing where this is within the site. So, like, say, a bit, bit more of a, tra a traditional plot, let's say, with the rear garden and two off-street parking spaces to the side. Again, like I say, it looks very similar from the outside, but it's actually a slightly different house type. But again, three bedrooms, and uh, I've shown there, two, two bedrooms for the children and a bedroom for the staff. And here's just a photo of what, what this property looks like. So, like I say, it's already been built and, and ready um, on the estate. In terms of this application, this has also received 16 objections. Thank you. Thank you for that, Jess. Uh, Mr. Stephen Halliday. Again, this is your opportunity to address the committee. You've got five minutes and the uh, time will start soon as you press your uh, red button. So when you're ready to start. Same issue again with this one is, is parking. What, uh, what the residents want to understand is why the council decides to buy one, miss one, and then buy one again. There's a young couple lives in that house, in their first house, and they're right they're smack in the middle of two children's homes. I don't think that's a fair consideration. And regarding to the, the gentleman opposite, they're discussing about parking uh, uh, advanced parking measures we keep them out right if they're passing council measures for them to have advanced park extra parking why can't our res us residents have extra parking if it's going to be passed for one why not be passed for another because we've also got parking is issues on our street as it is now um, if, so if you'll get planning permission for any parking extensions opposite on, on the way on the grass opposite and we want some form of parking. So I think under your application, you should be doing that to sweeten it sort of thing for, for the residents. But yet again, you know, I think it's a, a poor stance to have two homes and one uh, new home right in, in the middle of it all. Uh, unfortunately, the young couple's not here today to stand up for themselves, but uh, they were very distraught at the point having uh, children on either side and the colleagues opposite there said that there were um, no issues of trouble right they can't guarantee that they can't guarantee that 100 percent there's not going to be no issues you know you can you can paint your pictures of the rosy scenario with Ofsted passing here Ofsted's failed you before so you can still slip into measures you know and and it's it's just why does there have to be two on the same estate? And also, we've got the, the application you've already put forward for Cameron Cross. That's three children's homes in Woodlands. Why can't the council put some of these homes into the their developments where they've built their own properties um, at Tollbar? They've not even considered them sorts of applications. And there's plenty of waste ground in Woodlands where the local school were, where they could have built three or four brand new houses and, and uh, used them as family homes, but s segregated them away from residents. Because I still think we will have trouble. You know, and, and at the meeting, both uh, the lady that was there from the council thing, 
He wasn't even aware of the drugs and alcohol issues in, on the estates. Right? Even the new estate, the Keatmore estate, has had issues with drugs and smashed windows. Do you know what I mean? We're going to end up with, with you know, th these children are in homes, not because they want to be in homes. They're either from a broken family where they haven't had a very good upbringing or the trouble causing people. And how we could have that in, in our area and we don't really want it, quite honestly. You know, there's 28 objections all told for these two houses, right? And uh, I think it's unfair to consider two applications, possibly the one, but not two. You've got one minute remaining. You've got one minute remaining. You're finished, thank you. Do we have any questions for Mr Halliday? No? Thank you for your time, Mr Halliday. Okay, uh, we've got Mr Lee Fault and Mr Andy Wood representing the DCS Trust and the applicant have requested to speak in support of the application. This is now your opportunity um, to address the committee and you've got five minutes starting when you press your red button. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll just first take issue with the comment uh, made by the applicant in relation to why children are in care. Uh, the vast majority of children in care in Doncaster, and this is a pattern over time, are in care because of parental neglect. That is the reason that they enter care. They're not in care because they cause trouble. People often conflate the criminal justice process and the child in care process. These are very different things. So what we're talking about is children who have experienced trauma, mainly through parental neglect, often through abuse, that enter care through no control of their own, that Doncaster children, that we all, have a corporate parenting responsibility for. I just want to make that point very clear before we proceed. As to why we purchased two properties close together, but not next to each other, when we approached Keatmo, as we approached a range of different providers, there were two properties left on the estate, those two properties. The rest of the properties had already been sold, and that's what Keatmo informs at the time. So we purchased what was available. I'm, I'm sorry, you, you're not allowed to intervene, you've had your five minutes, thank you. It, it was true at the point that we made that, we were told by Keepmo these were the two available properties that we purchased. That's, that's the truth at the time. So we, per, we, we are looking at a range of properties across Doncaster. These properties happen to be in this area, but actually we're looking across the totality of the borough and we have other bids for properties uh, currently active and live that will be subject to planning at a, a future time. We're aiming to increase the number of children's homes in the borough substantially because of the number of children that are outside the borough. So the fact that we have children, the fact that these three properties fall in this area at the moment uh, was about two things. Firstly, the Camborne was a council-owned asset, so it was an opportunity for us to repurpose an asset that wasn't being used in an area that met our needs that had a good community, stable community, access to good schools. The development on Dove Lane is um, a new estate and we're looking for high quality aspirational homes for our children in forming communities. So this also fits our proposal of ensuring that children live in safe communities um, and in, in a way in which all Doncaster children have a right to grow up. But we are looking at properties across the entirety of uh, Doncaster and we are actually uh, in negotiation over one property now uh, and property search is ongoing for more properties in other locations. Mr Galtz. Just, just to add to that, <laughs> I mean we've been trying to find homes for nearly two years so obviously just as the pandemic broke that put a real challenge in being able to actually go and visit homes but also the implications that the pandemic brought on tax on homes made it more uh, affordable for some. It also meant the house prices rocketed up. So actually, if it was a perfect storm to not be able to find homes, that was the time. So with the best will in the world, we had a real commitment to try and get children back as quick as we could in aspirational homes, hence not choosing a, a wasteland area. These were the homes that came up. Uh, had they been elsewhere across the borough, we would have gone to them. It's not the fact that, you know, it's just for, in some ways it's unfortunate that we, they all fell roughly in the same space but we've been looking for a long time for this the longer we look there's two major implications for that 
Doncaster children are away from Doncaster and that means a number of things. We can't choose their schools, we can't be close, close to their friends. But also, they're in really expensive placements. Thousands and thousands of pounds a week of taxpayers' money that could be used better. So the ho one of the whole reasons for this is that we bring Doncaster children back and we better proportion the Doncaster pound and spend, not only for these children, but also for wider residents. Thank you for that. Councillor Pickering. Yeah, I, I've got to say, I, I sympathise with your difficulties, but did, did it not occur to you that sandwiching one resident between two might be a step too far? I suppose I understand your concern, councillor, and it's a good question. And I suppose what we would say is this. Um, most children's homes, most children's homes are four-bed children's homes, so they're quite obviously children's homes. We're doing something very different here two bed children's homes so it feels like a family environment uh, we don't think that there'll be the impact that the residents are concerned about we understand what the residents are saying but we genuinely do not, we, we wouldn't enter into this project if we thought it was liable to fail so there'll be really careful matching for those children plus that anybody can move on to estates and most ASB in Doncaster and social behaviour and most offending happens by people who aren't looked after by normal residents of the borough. Now, if you have an issue with a resident of the borough, that's very different. You raise an issue with us as a provider of children's services, we have a statutory duty to respond. So if you're unhappy about the way something's going, you raise that with us. We have a statutory duty to respond to you and to address those concerns. We don't think that presents a greater risk than anybody potentially buying a property and behaving in an antisocial way. If we were opening a large children's home that was out of line with what was happening on the estate, I would understand these concerns more, absolutely. But what we're talking about is two children living in as much as we can replicate it, a family home environment. So we didn't, we didn't do this you know, without considering the impact on the community, but we think the way that we're approaching the care will mean that it has a minimal impact on the community. And if, the, if and it's an if, the community does have issues, we will respond in a timely way, we will listen to you, and not only that, we have a statutory duty to do so. So I think actually, in terms of potential issues for the community, there is more assurance in having a home run by a provide, well, the local authority, because the trust will not be trained at the point that the home's open, uh, than there is, for example, for just anybody moving in with no control over what they might do or the behaviours they display. So. We did consider it, we have thought about it, we think it can be managed. And as we move towards children being in more like family home settings, much more, and we want these children to live there for a long time. We're talking about maybe children moving in when they're 10, 11, staying there right till they transition to independence, like you would in any family home. So, you know, we think they can be part of these communities, and we've seen them be part of communities where we've got provision elsewhere. So, we know this can work. So, it is considered, I appreciate it's unusual but we really genuinely believe it can work. Thank you for that. Do you have another question, Councillor Pickford? Yeah, just a supplement. Have, have you any in uh, your other properties where, where this situation's occurred, or will this be a first? It's the first time that we're doing a two-bed children's home. Uh, we base that on a project that was delivered in Stoke. Sorry, I don't think oh. that's what it will be. Can you use your microphone? I, I mean, the, the issue of being either side of a single... Uh, Apologies, Councillor. No, 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 it never has. Part of the reason, though, is the, the type of properties that we've used before as children's homes. So generally, most children's homes that are owned by the local authority or the Children's Trust are, were council houses that were not through together. So it's generally semi-detached homes which were then adapted to make into a, into a children's home. So this type of housing, uh, i.e. new-built housing by companies like Keatmo and Strata and others, never existed when we were doing children's home. So this model couldn't have been implemented at that time. Um, so I say previously, it was all council owned property knocked through to make a space large enough for a larger number of children than what we have now. So um, the short answer is no, but with that explanation. Thank you for that. Do we have any other questions? Okay, thank you. Oh, Councillor Anderson. Hi, I'm on the staff handover periods. 
will both homes be sort of the shift patterns exactly the same? Because obviously that would add quite a lot of traffic all at one time on, on each side. It's a good question, Councillor. Yes, uh, the, the, the handover patterns would be the same. So normally the shift pattern sort of goes 7 till 3, 3.30, 3.30 till 10, and then an evening person on, in, you know, in the evenings. Uh, I think your colleague uh, also raised a, an interesting challenge there about can we stagger that? I think we need to take that away and look at it. Um, like I said, I can't give you any assurance today because we haven't looked at it before now. But uh, anything we can do to minimise disruption in that community, we will do, and we will look at. Okay, do you have a supplementary question? Are you happy with that, Councillor Anderson? Okay, do we have any other questions? Okay, thank you very much for your time. Okay, uh, committee, we're going to go into a debate. Do you have any questions for the officer? Councillor Stapleton. Uh, thank you. Don't worry, Jess, I'm not going to get hard time on this one. Um, it, partly, it, it, just for debate, basically. I'm quite concerned when I'm hearing members of the public talk about segregation. Um, I actually find that quite despicable that that's even entered people's minds. Um, we're talking about children that need help. And these children quite often, not probably 90 or 90 plus percent of the time, are in care for no fault of their own. And I find it shocking that communities, instead of caring for these children, would look to punish them further. I mean, where do we go next? Do, do we have local vigilantes chasing children down the streets? Um, you know, like some sort of children's catch from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, I don't know. It, I just find it bizarre that the focus is being put on children. We don't know the background. They, they, we don't know why they're there. It's none of our business, none of the community's business why they're there. Um, we, we're also not taking into consideration. I mean, I, I, I was quite happy when we looked through the application from the material planning reasons, um, the, the officer, the, the, Jess has actually gone through everything and everything, I was satisfied. And the only reason this is at committee stage now is because of objections. I listened to every one of the objections. I've gone through the, the representations. Just to double check, is there something that could be there? And when I'm reading things like staff staying away at night may impact, impact the residential immunity of neighbours. Well, what's that mean? The local community can be ringing the police every time somebody decides to stay up past 12 o'clock. We've got to be looking and treating these children as normal and as part of the community. So that, that's my sort of mini statement for debate and for the question for Jess, are you quite happy with what you've put forward? Well, yeah, the recommendation is to approve based on the conditions that are provided in the report. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that. Do we have any other comments? Okay. Um, is there a proposal to grant planning permission subject to conditions? That's been moved by Councillor Farmer. Is there a seconder? Councillor Stapleton. Can I have show of hands in favour of the application? That's unanimous. That's been passed. Thank you for that. Item six on the agenda is appeal decisions. This is for information only. Does any member wish to speak on this item? Can we move that it be noted then? Are we agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Members, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the business of today's meeting. I'd like to thank everyone for their attendance and input, and I now declare the meeting closed.